I'm prospecting the rocks, fishing for drummer. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne, and in today's video, I'm going to just work my way around this rock shelf looking for delicious drummer to catch. Make sure that you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get started. So I've come down to a local headland. Directly behind me to my right, I'm gonna start. I'm actually gonna work my way right along this rock shelf looking at all the little spots which I think there's a possibility of catching a drummer. I'm going to burly as I go and I'm going to sort of narrate that and explain what I'm thinking and the sorts of places to look for drummer while I'm doing that. Today it's blowing, the wind's blowing from the north so I'm fishing on the southern end of this headland to get out of the wind. Partly because when I'm teaching it's easier when I've got calmer conditions, I can get close to the edge and, and I can really concentrate on teaching. If I was to fish out there, it'd be pretty blustery. So anyway, I'm going to head down now and uh, get started. There's just a small wash to my right. In general, the water here is very calm. It's super safe. There's virtually nothing can happen to you here. You're protected from the waves. There's just a little wash. I've just chucked a little bit of bread in there, so I'm just going to prospect it. I think it's like a 50-50 chance, although because it's overcast, that's a, another plus today. A little bit of breeze out here, so I'm going to have a little go and see if I can sniff out a drummer in this gentle little wash. I'm not going to cast out very far at all. I'm just going to really just drop my float just in the edge there. That's possibly even casting out too far. I'd actually like to be closer to the rocks than that. But now that it's in the water, I'm going to leave it there for a moment. Something will bite it. But obviously I want it to be a drummer and not a, um, a sweep or something else. Now I might actually gently bring it back in because I shouldn't lose my bait. It's too far out for my liking. So I'm going to bring it back in right next to the rocks because that's where the drummer like to hang out. Right in the edge of that wash. Here comes a little wave. It's really just a little bit of a surge here. No, I haven't even had a nibble at this point. Not even a nibble. Which is interesting because usually that bread gets nailed pretty quick by something. Now that, I'd say, is a drummer because of the way it bit. I'm just going to lift him straight up. Woohoo! <coughs> that's a nice little fish. So there you go, that was my first cast. And that's a, a nice legal eating sized drummer. He's a fat fish. Look at that guy. I can feel he's really thick. Look at his teeth. They mainly feed on vegetation, crabs and different things. So how's that? That wasn't what I'd call my ideal drummer wash, but I burly it up with a bit of bread and I've got a nice fish within maybe of having my float in the water for two minutes. So I'm gonna take this guy in and I think it's worthwhile having a couple more casts. Mate, I haven't even traveled anywhere on this rock shelf yet and I've already got a drummer. So. And there's heaps of, spot, heaps of likely spots, probably for the next 150, 200 metres along this rock shelf that are pretty safe. So that's very, um, very encouraging. At this point in the video, I've only really just started fishing. I, I really should show you what my setup is. I'm using what we typically call, call a bobby cork. So it's a small foam float. It's bright orange on the top and white underneath. You need to have that bright orange on the top because when your float goes into the white water you can't tell where it is. So you need that bright fluoro colour so you can watch your float. 
So I'm float fishing. Now above my float on my line, I'm just going to bring it down. I've got on my line a small piece of rubber tubing. I use this rubber tubing to set the depth of my float. Like if I look, if I go like this, it doesn't move. But if I push it, it will move. Or if I pull it back in this way, it'll move. That way I can set the depth that I want my bait to float under my float. That's one of the crucial aspects of drummer fishing is you need to evaluate what the approximate depth of the water because you want your bait about a third of the way, let's say it's six feet deep, you'd like your bait to be floating at about two feet above the bottom. So I have adjusted the depth here, I'm actually fishing quite deep. I reckon that I'm fishing, that's about seven feet. And then below my float, I have a swivel with about a, a 40 centimetre leader to a 2 suicide hook. And my float actually sits just above that, like so. Then when the float hits the water, because the stopper's up there, the sinker goes down, the line just flows through the float, and this goes all the way up until it hits the stopper. So you can see how that works. This is just free running on the line. It'll go all the way up to the stopper. And um, where I'm fishing here, it looks to me like it's about five metres deep, probably. That's why I've got my bait down a little bit low. I don't want to be right up near the surface. And what I did before is I, I've got some bread in my pouch that I'm using for bait. And I took the crusts off the bread. I used the crust for burley. So what I'm doing now is I'm peeling the crust off. Oops, dropped a bit, like so. I use the nice soft centerpiece for bait. Just going to put that back in my carrier. Then what I do is I wet the bread. So the bread that I'm using for burley, I want it to sink. I don't want it to float and get carried away with the wind. So once I've wet the bread, I just mush it up a little bit like porridge, like so. That's what I did before I just caught that drummer. I took the crusts off two slices of bread and because there's a little wash here, where the waves go in, there's a slight current that carries out. I'm literally getting this bread and I'm just, I'm dropping it over the edge into the water, only maybe a metre from where I'm standing because I know it's gonna get sucked out with the current. And that's what was happening with my float. And when I caught that drummer, I was probably a good eight metres out from the rocks. I started right near the edge, but it got sucked out. So I'm gonna chuck another bait in now. But first, I'll throw this nice piece of mushed up bread in the water. I'm just lobbing it right on the edge because it's, it's actually quite deep right there. Now I'm gonna put some bait on. I'm going to test my drag, it needs to be a bit stronger. So I'm not casting out very far, I'm just going to lob that in straight on the edge actually, because I could get a fish right there. They could come sniffing in for that burly, and generally when a drummer takes the float, they slam it. You know when you've had a drummer bite, now I'm getting a bite right now, but I think that was a small fish. It didn't look like so much of a drummer bite. Alrighty. I'm ready to whack it in again. You can see that, it's not a bad little wash just here. Now I'm gonna just flick that just out there. The last drummer bite I had was out a little bit out from shore, which surprised me. Because it was drifting out from the rocks a little bit when it got hit. 
Now I'm watching my float all the time because as soon as it goes under, I want to hit it. I've had a couple of little bites. So my, my bread might have been knocked off by a small fish. Yeah, I think I've lost the bait. Something small took the bait. I could tell I was getting little bites, but there's no mistaking a drummer bite. I'm just going to drop it right there, right on the edge. See if anything's in close. Because very often you get drummer very close to shore. And if one, hit, if a big one hits it, I've got to put, I've got to apply immediate pressure because they, they will scurry to hide under the nearest crevice. I haven't really had a bite as yet. All right, I haven't had a nibble yet. Just letting my float go out there. I'm surprised that I haven't had a bite, so I'm actually gonna wind it in. Yeah, I've got no bait. Yeah, the, uh, I have no bait, I thought I'm, I'm not, getting, not getting any bites, so I'm not going to leave it there too long if I'm not sure if I've got a bait or not. A bite, yeah, on my bait, sorry. What am I going on about? So this is pretty safe rock fishing, what I'm doing just here. Standing on the edge, there's no huge waves here or anything like that. Just keeping my eye on my float, waiting for a nice whack. Nice bite from a drummer. I've had a little nibble, hopefully it hasn't knocked my bread off. Now that was just a small fish. My normal practice when I'm prospecting the rocks for drummer is I'll try a spot, I'll burly, see if there's any action there because often it's a matter of locating the fish. There may be a school of drummer feeding in a particular little part of the rocks. Now my first cast, I caught a nice eating drummer just in there, but at the moment there's a lot of little fish that are nicking my bait. I haven't really had another drummer bite. So what I'm gonna do is chuck a little bit more burly in there, just give it one or two more casts, then I'll move on to the next spot. Um, and that's a great way to go because you will locate the fish and then sometimes you'll come across some Really awesome fishing doing that. So I'm gonna go and get a little bit more bread so I can burly up. I won't persevere with this particular spot much longer. Okay. Just a little baby one. So I think that um, I'm not going to fish here anymore. Haven't fished here. I've had maybe eight or ten casts in this location. You can see I'm using a bit of prawn for bait this time. The two baits that I'm using today are prawns and bread. Prawns and bread are fantastic bait for drummer. But um, I've caught so many big fish on bread. You know, so many drummer in the two to four kilo range over the years I've caught just using bread. It's a lot of fun. So I think I'm going to just grab my gear, walk a little bit along this shelf and just pick another spot that looks like there could be some fish there and we'll, we'll have a go there. So I'm just having a look along here. It's a little bit shallower just in front of me than where I was. There's a tiny little wash tiny little wash just here but I can see there's a slight eddy to my right where the white water is over there that looks kind of interesting there's plenty of bait here on the rocks 
So I'm just going to walk over there a little bit closer and I might just jump on the end of this little bit over here and have a look. You can see that there's, um, there's a lot of weed on the rocks just here. Heaps of it, lots of natural bait. And drummer, they feed on the weed just like Luderick. Just going to have a little peek over here. Okay, you can see there's lots of barnacles here. Barnacles are your friend. They give you grip on the rocks. They're only not your friend if you happen to fall over and scratch your leg on them. That's not much fun. But they actually do help you get grip on the rocks if you need to actually brace yourself any time. So we're going to go over this way. There's a little channel here. I quite like the look of it, it's not too bad. There's a nice little wash there, there's some shallow kind of submerged rocky bits with a little bits of deep channel in between. And I can see that the wash here is going from where I am, it's heading across that way into like a little bit of a deep crevice. I think it's worth tossing a bit of burley in here. But what I would need to do, I would need to actually shorten the depth of my float because it was much deeper in that spot over there. Here I probably have to shorten it by at least two feet, otherwise I could see I could get snagged on the bottom. But I think it's worth having a go. So I'll give it a go. There's a bit of wash there when the waves come in. Not that they're very big waves, but with the type of fishing that I'm doing with the float, I just want that last group of waves just to settle down a little bit before I throw the burley in and toss my line and it really just confirmed to me it's not it's probably half the depth here that what it was over there so I'm going to um, grab my burley and just lob it in there and that bread's going to swirl around in there and just get carried out that little um, that little channel I might actually get another slice because I'd like to whack a couple of handfuls of burley in there. I'd be surprised if I don't get a fish there. But it gets deeper off the end. That's why I've got a fish pretty shallow there. I'm just wondering if that's too deep. You need to make regular adjustments. I can see it's pretty shallow and the tide's on the way out, so it's just going to get shallower here. But I'd like to have a fish just off the end there as well. It's just worth a cast. When you fish for drummer, you really have to be alert. Because if a decent fish takes it, their habit is to, is to run straight for cover. And you can't give them an inch. I've actually got my drag up pretty tight because um, I don't want to give them any leeway. It just happens so quick. I've been blown away so many times. So we'll just see what happens when I put a bait in here. I'm going to flick it out a little bit because it's really shallow just near the edge here. So I'm just going to whack it out in that spot there. Might move over a fraction. I've got to keep my eye on that float because I chucked that burly in. Yep, I'm on. And he's... Look, he's not a huge one. He's, um probably just under size because they've got to be 30 centimeters legal length and I would estimate him at about 10 oh he's probably about 27 28 so that was my first cast in there and I did get a I did hook up on a drummer so just not a big one really where I want to be then but um, I'll leave it there anyway it's kind of um, it's a little bit of wash from these couple of waves but hey, I just had a bite I'm on again what's how big is this one another little one or bigger oh. <laughs> another small one nice fish though
about the same size as the last one, but it didn't take long to get a bite. Both of those were on bread, those fish. Okay, so what I do is I, I, I put, this. you can see it's quite a large bread bait. I buried my 2-0 in there and I compress the top part of the bait. I compress the top part, that compacts it onto the hook, but I like to leave the bottom part fluffy. So you can see that's, I only get four baits out of a slice of bread. Okay, come on mama and papa. Yeah, I think that's a better spot where I've just cast. Let's just see how long it takes to get a bite there. Looks like a likely spot. I'm getting a bite, but oops. <laughs> a little bit keen then. My float is way back there. Get off the rocks. <laughs> I don't think that was a drummer bite, I think that was some other little creature. So I'll break off another piece of bread. You can see a nice big piece of bread. I make sure that I don't crush it because I do want the bottom part to be nice and fluffy. When I thread that bread in and then I want to close the top part over the hook. Compress that on like that, leave that a little bit soft. A little bit different to a beach worm. <laughs> but um, this is what's so great about fishing. There's so many different things that you can do. Well, this gutter has produced two small fish so far. What I'm really hoping for is something a bit bigger. Got to keep my eye on that float. Hope that a nice big drummer, or even a one kilo, two kilo fish, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, it's a nice bite. Oops, there it goes again. <laughs> I'm putting in a decent strike because, yeah, sometimes there's a little bit of slack in your line. You've got to take up the slack. So, back in again. Did it again. <laughs> okay, so I might have to consider my next location. So I've got a couple of fish here, but they're just small ones. It's a nice little washy area. It's gonna get a bite from a nice decent sized drummer. That's what I want. I'm getting nibbles just now, but they're probably just small, to like um, sweep and stuff like that. I think my bait's gone already. Now I've caught a couple of small drummer close to the shore. I'm thinking of maybe tossing out just a fraction further, because sometimes they're for hanging out further. You just don't know, you've just got to prospect and try all parts of a location. So I've just gone slightly deeper, and I'm going to flick this out a bit further out the back and just see if I get a better bite out there as opposed to the little nibbles that I'm getting in close to the shore. Because there are fish out there, but there's just I'm just looking for those big fish in amongst the little ones. So I've had a couple of tiny nibbles now on my float, but I haven't had it. Yeah, that's a solid bite. That went under really quickly then. When you see your float, when you see your float just take off like a rocket, you know that's a drummer bite. When there's other little fish, they just tug at the float like that. But when you get one of those nice solid bites, that's when it's got a lot of promise. So I'll cast back out in that spot because that was a decent bite. I think I'm just feeding the small fish in this gutter. I've pulled in two undersized fish about 28 centimetres long each, but I think it's time to move along to the next little spot. 
and see what I can find there. I've walked along the rocks maybe about 80 metres or so from where I was and it's a slightly different setup just here. I'm on a fairly low lying point and there's a wash that comes off this, goes into this kind of a, a gutter beside me. The food's getting washed off the rocks at the front. It's getting carried sideways across into that section there. It's not very deep. I can tell just by looking at it that there are parts there that would be maybe only a metre deep. So I'm going to need to fish pretty shallow there. But I kind of like the look of it because there's a natural flow off the rocks here where those waves would wash any food into there. And I think it's certainly worth a cast. I'll be actually casting out a bit further to get out into the zone. Um, and as I've done in the other spots, there's been drummer in every spot so far. Not, no big ones yet. I'm going to chuck some burley out, take the crusts off and just have maybe half a dozen casts in this spot and then once again I'll move along to the next bit and just keep moving until I can hopefully find some better quality fish. So I've got my um, crusts, I'll just wet them. And uh, I'm going to head right out, I'm going to be standing kind of, I expect my legs to get a little bit wet, but uh, it's pretty safe, that's okay. So just want to get right in that spot. Every now and then, every now and then when there's a set wave, it's going to wash across this shallow shelf. So there's I've got plenty of grip. These spikes on my feet make a massive difference. They're really good for grip. You can see that wave that's just washed across then. It's probably come over at about 30 or 40 centimetres above the rock. But I'll just keep my eye on the waves that are coming and I'll just fish in between. If I need to step back, I will. Admittedly, the tide is going out as well. I can see that there's um, I can see that there's a lot of kanji or kanjivoy on the rocks just here, right along this edge. So plenty of natural food for the fish. This looks I really like the look of this, although I'll have to fish it in between the waves. I'll just step back for a second while I put my bait on. So you can see there's a wave just coming here now. So I'm just gonna come in here and relax and put my bait on. So now I'm just waiting for a break. Get my float out there. I won't stand too close to the edge. And hopefully that bread I've just chucked in has wet their appetite a little bit. Just gonna stand over here. There's still quite a bit of current moving from left to right. Just wait till for that to calm down a little bit. All right, I'm out there. So while I'm watching my float, I'm going to be keeping my eye on those waves to the left as well. Now I've got a bit of current here, so the float's going to drift out with the current. At least it covers ground. Now it's gone underneath the water. I didn't know if that was actually a bite or if I was hooked on the bottom then. But yeah, I was not sure because it's pretty shallow. Maybe I'll go fractionally shallower with my float. I think, I think I'll reduce the depth even more. Just so that I'm sure I'm not getting on the bottom. Okay, there's a couple of waves coming out the back, but let's just see if we can get a bite in between. Yeah, there's that wave. Anything sniffing around out there? I got a, I got a bite then. I didn't hook up, so I don't know what that was. I've got to put the pressure on this guy. I don't think he's massive, but I think he's an okay fish. Come, he's come right in close, trying to hide. Yeah, he's, he's the biggest one so far.
So that's a slightly better fish. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a good fish. Beautiful eating fish. Look at him. Super fat. <laughs> so this guy's slightly bigger than the one that I kept before. This is my sixth drummer that I've hooked. I've released four, but I'm going to keep this guy. And then I think there's a bit more promise out there, so it's worth a couple more casts in that particular spot. As I mentioned, this is a much shallower run just here. It's a nice little wash that goes off the end of this, this point with heaps of bait. But I've actually reduced the depth of my float to maybe one metre max. My stopper is in my fingers and there's my float. So that's only what about a bit, that's about 80 centimetres and then I've got my leader underneath it. Because it's pretty shallow and getting shallower as the tide drops but it's great looking terrain. You wouldn't be able to fish where I am now at high tide. The waves would be washing over right where I'm standing. So this is kind of a low tide spot. So let's see if I can get another nice eating fish. Dropped him. That was probably the biggest fish I've hooked so far. There's actually a little bit of a ledge out there. Goes over a ledge which they go into, but my line's not frayed. He got off, but that was, yeah, that was a better fish. I actually tried putting on a, a prawn that time because I wanted to cast further out into the wash and the bread bait spins around in the air. So I've got my nice peel prawn here and I'm going to, um, I'm not going to use this all of this prawn because it's too big. So I'm going to thread that on and put a half hitch around the end. I'm going to just chop the end bit of that off and save that. I'll use two or three of them to make another bait, but man, that was a good fish then. Whoa. Oh well, I'll see if they're, I, I should chuck a bit more bread in because if I chuck a bit more bread in, I can maybe keep them excited. It's gonna keep my eyes on this wave that's behind me. I've got my cleats, so it'll hit me, but it'll be all right. I haven't had a bite yet. I'm just watching my float drift around out there. It's in the zone. Just keeping my eye on it. Maybe that last one getting off. Oh, that was a good bite. Oh, missed him. I love these low water spots. I really do. I love fishing places like this. Oh, it makes me really happy. <laughs> I'm just going to flick my float out into the edge of this wash because I found that I've been getting the good bites right out the back. But I'm just going to try because I've been chucking the bread in close here. So I've got my float just in the wash there. Yeah, the better bites have been when it's got right out of way off over the end of the shelf, but something may pick it up on the way out. Yeah, I'm getting bites, but they look like little ones. Not really drummer bites. In fact, I might have lost my bait already. I think my bait's gone already. Yeah, just little nibblers. Yeah, it's a fish. I couldn't quite tell then. That's the smallest one of the day. <laughs> in fact, look, I jagged him in the side. There's obviously fish out there because the last one I had was a really good one. But unfortunately I didn't land it. Not very big.
<coughs> Parrotfish or a wrasse. These are quite colourful. It's a Maori wrasse. Um, they, they actually have there been a lot of Chinese restaurants in, old, in, old, in Chinatown in Sydney. He swallowed the hook, actually. Um, let's see, look at the colour of the red of his um, fins. Very bright red. He's got those sharp, sharp tooth on the front. Look at him. So far I've prospected three different places. The first place I landed three drummer, one I kept, two were just undersized, I let them go. The second place I caught two drummer, both undersized. The third place I landed three drummer, I landed one nice eating fish. I lost the biggest one I've hooked so far, the hook just pulled on that, I actually lost two fish. So I'm gonna, I've just moved along the rocks again. There's a guy fishing over here, but we've just had a chat. It's really cool, so I'm going to um, just have a little prospect along the front here. A couple of nice little bits here, so I'll have a cast out here now. I'll do the same thing. I'll burly up with a bit of bread crust and then drop my float in. I haven't lost any gear. I'm still using the same hook, same float, everything that I started off with. So, I mean, sometimes you still lose gear, but it's good when you can fish and you don't lose any tackle. That's one of the benefits of, of float fishing. When you're float fishing, you're suspending your bait above the bottom. Also, when you fish with a float, because it drifts with the current, you're covering ground, you're covering area, and you often drift into the place where the fish are. When you throw your line in the water, first of all, you might not be getting a bite, then it'll move out, and you'll get to a certain point, and you'll get bites. And if you cast back in that same place again, that's where the fish are. So I'm just going to have a quick go out here. Once again, I'll need to adjust the depth of my float accordingly based on what I can see with my eye, approximately how deep I think the water is. It's a good fish, this one. <laughs> so um, that didn't take very long. First cast in that in this little um, gutter, another really nice eating size drummer cracker. They pull pretty hard. Just going to grab him. Yeah, it's, I find it hard to get my hands around his girth because he's pretty thick. When I just caught that last fish, he was a little bit bigger, probably the biggest one I've got so fast. It literally was 20 seconds after I threw my line in this next spot, but I could feel it take me over some reef. And probably the first 10 centimeters of my, of my line near my hook is all frayed. I'm gonna need to actually retie the hook because there's no way I'd toss that back out like that. I hook a good fish and I'm just gonna lose it because the line's been weakened. So this will be cast number two in this spot. First cast was literally 20 seconds and I landed a nice fish. But before I did that, I threw a nice handful of bread into that little gutter and then I followed it up with a nice juicy chunk. They love it. So this will be cast number two. We'll see how long it takes to get a bite. I can see a little bit of a wave coming. I'm just gonna watch this wave. It's totally safe where I am here, but it's just kind of washing through there. This is actually a really easy spot right here because I've got a nice vantage point and where I'm fishing is just directly in this lovely little wash in front of me. It's probably about, I'm guessing about two metres deep at the moment at this stage of the tide. So let's just see what happens when I, when I flick my float in there. See how long it takes to get hammered. Mm. 
Yep, that's a bite. There goes the float. Whoa! I'm putting a prawn on this time. Let that wave go past. Come on! I'm looking for a really big bite. Not any of those little nibblers. We had a couple of tiny little pecks. Oh, hang on, that was, that was a bit more of a bite then. No decent bites yet. I think I have no more bait. Well, hardly any anyway. Just a tiny little bit of prawn left. I touched the bottom then. That's not good. I hit the bottom then. My float just went slack and was floating like that, so obviously that meant my bait had hit the bottom. So I'm just going to drop the uh, drop the depth a little bit because I don't want to get snagged. Yep. Oh. Got to get the pressure on this guy. Ah. Oh. <laughs> You just don't know how big these guys are going to be. I got the bite, but looks a little bit frenetic, but you have to get them away from the reef. And once again, this is just a small one. I'm thinking that um, this is the fourth place I've fished. I've got drummer every, every spot. I've got a nice one first cast, but I think I'll have one more cast here, and then we'll just maybe move along the shelf and have a little go in, in one other spot. As I've been working my way along this headland, I've started out right out the end. It's a little bit more turbulent out there. The closer I get in towards the beach, it's getting calmer and quieter. While I've worked my way along this rock shelf in relatively calm conditions, I've landed nine drummer. I've got three in the bag, three nice eating fish. Let six go. And while the tide's getting pretty low, just behind me here, there's just a little bit of a indentation in the rocks here. There's lots of food here also, so probably I'm just gonna have my last go here. So, I've, so far I've fished three different locations, burlied up at each and got fish at each spot. So I trust that this is helping you with your rock fishing or you, you're able to pick up a few tips. I'm trying to um, articulate what I'm thinking and what I'm doing, so yeah, I hope it helps. Make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> and I'm just gonna have a couple of quick casts in here. Our sun is starting to set, getting a little bit low. What time is it? It's um, 20 past four. So I'll uh, finish, finish nice and early. I need to get onto that rock. <laughs> in between the waves, there's just a, enough of a little spot here I can get across, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that I can make it across this little um, this little section in between the waves. Just looking to see what the bottom's doing. Yep, looks all right to me. Lots of kanji in there. I want to get up and fish off that rock. Just wanted to make sure that my, where I placed my foot was stable. Okay. I'm going to chuck a bit of bread into this little um, gutter over here. The water looks pretty clear. It's pretty clear in between the waves. I don't know how good that's going to be. I can see the bottom really easy, so that's not all that inspiring, but maybe if I cast out a bit further, there may be some, something floating around out there. Just see if there's anything out there. At least I'm not too close to it looking over the top. 
There's a drummer in there, he'll sniff up that bit of bread. Okay, so my float's drifting out in that little current. I haven't had a bite yet. Be interesting if I hook a fish. It's kind of, yeah, iffy sort of water. Uh, my float's just gone under. Uh, I don't think it was a bite. See if I can tempt something right out there. Yep. I've got a fish, I don't know what it is. Oh. <laughs> I can see a wave coming in out there. It's just a small drummer. So I'll chuck him back in, see if there's anything bigger out there. Alright, it's a bite. Oh, I've got him. This one's a bit bigger, I think. Oh, he got off. <laughs> that was a drummer. It was a better one. You'd rarely be able to fish out here. I've walked right out here. It's only because it's low tide and it's relatively flat. I just hooked a nice drummer out right off the end of this kind of weedy shallow section before. But I'm fishing with a float a long distance from where I'm standing. I'll have to watch these waves because if a big wave comes in, you'll probably get a little bit wet. Just see what this little one does. It's going to hit the rock. That was a little wave. I don't really want to get wet, but... Now that's where I just had that big bite. So we're just going to see what happens out there. But it'll be challenging to land a fish because there's a lot of rocks in between me and, that, me and the float. And there's a bigger wave coming and I'd like to get out of here actually. So I'm not going to look at my float, I'm going to walk back up over here. I don't even know if I've had a bite, actually I can't see my float. I've got a fish, would you believe that? <laughs> it's another wrasse. I had a bite. I turned around to walk away because while they're not big waves, I just didn't want to get slammed. And uh, when I turned back around again, I couldn't see my float. And this wrasse had taken it. We'll let this little Maori wrasse go. I don't think they get much bigger, actually, but he can go back and no. <laughs> They've got sharp teeth and you still got to be careful you don't get spiked. Make sure that you like and subscribe. I trust you've enjoyed this as much as I have making the video. I look forward to seeing you really soon.